Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is a good clock capacitor, something your original Xbox most likely isn't very familiar with any longer. These keep the time settings on your Xbox so you have the proper date settings for save files, Xbox Live matches, and in case you want to check the time on your system instead of looking at anything else around your room. So to sum up, it's pretty much useless. And did I mention that it may be destroying your console as we speak too? These supercapacitors were originally used instead of small coin batteries as a cost-saving measure from Microsoft and are very prone to failure. They can leak which can destroy your motherboard and cause a bunch of other issues or even brick the console altogether given enough time. In fact, many caps used in electronics during this time have this exact problem. The Xbox just happens to be one of the more notable examples from this time of capacitor plague. So let's fix it. First of all, do you need a clock cap for operation of the console? Well. It depends. If you have a 1.6 or later motherboard, it is required for regular operation, and if you check the bottom of your console and it was manufactured in 2004 or later, odds are you have this version. Another bonus is if you have the 1.6 or later unit, the clock caps are a much higher quality and do not fail nearly as often as the other versions. I personally haven't seen a single leaky clock cap from this version, so the situation for you probably isn't as dire as the other versions. The 1.0 through the 1.4 versions aren't as lucky. They don't require the cap to operate at all, though it is nice to not have to deal with this message every time you start up your console. If you do plan on soft modding it at some point, it may be required depending on what mods you use too. So it really comes down to preference if you choose to replace it or remove it completely. But I'll show you both methods with all the versions ahead. Here are the tools you'll need, but some of these might be optional depending on whether you replace the cap or not. Torx T20 and T10 bits are required. Q-tips and isopropyl alcohol for cleaning, a pair of pliers, soldering items, and some new caps for a replacement, if you choose to do that. Start by flipping over your console and removing the six Torx T20 screws from the bottom. They're all hidden, but there are two under the stickers on the top and the bottom edges. The other four are below the rubber feet. A nice trick that I use to save some time is just to remove the edges of the feet so you can take out the screw and it also keeps the feet still in place. That way you don't need to glue or tape them on when you're done either. They just pretty much stay in place. Flip the console back over once these screws are out and work the top loose by prying up on either side of the lid. Sometimes these are really stuck in place so it may be a bit of a struggle, but you should be able to wiggle up on both sides and it'll eventually come off. Once it does, you now have access to the disk drive on the left and the hard drive on the right. Remove three more Torx T10 screws to get the plastic housings for these loose. One is in the middle and the other two are in the front holding the disk drive in place. I like to remove the ribbon cables from each of the units and the power from the disk drive before sliding out the hard drive first, followed by the disk drive second. The hard drive can also just be flipped over and put off to the side if you don't want to remove it completely. Now you finally have access to the motherboard and the clock cap too. You can typically tell right away if the cap's gone bad since there's either corrosion or what looks like a spill on the board right where it is. The 1.0 to 1.4 version caps are in the lower left corner on the motherboards, and the 1.6 models have them right under the IDE ribbon connection towards the top left. To remove these the easiest way possible, just grab the top of the cap with some pliers and bend it back and forth until both of the legs break off. Clean up the board in that area and reassemble your Xbox to go play some more Halo. Really, it's that easy if you just want to remove it. But if you plan on replacing yours or you want to remove it more carefully, here's a detailed guide for the different models and the timestamps for each of them. Here's all the T10 screw locations holding the motherboard in place, but before removing them completely, you should remove all of the other connections from the board first. Remove the daughter board and the main power connection located in the front, the IDE cable, and the fan connection in the back and set these to the side. Now remove the screws from around the board holding it in place. Here's all the locations for holding the motherboard in place, but before removing them completely, you should remove all of the other connections from the board first. The IDE cable from the upper left, remove the main power connection in the front right, the controller ports and front power cables in the same area, and the fan connection in the back and set these to the side. Now you can remove all the screws from around the rest of the board. Now lift from the front edge of the board and slide it forward towards you slightly just to get the board loose from the AV connection at the back of the case. You may need to wiggle it back and forth a bit to get it free, but it should be fully loose at this point. If you run into any resistance lifting up on the board, check to make sure that all the screws are removed or push cables out of the way in the front. Once it is out, locate the clock cap location from the bottom of the board and trim the ends of the legs flush. 
I've found that this makes it slightly easier to remove the caps while heating the connections. If you already broke off the cap, you might need some tweezers to remove the leftover leg parts from the holes too. Be sure to add some flux to each of the joints to help with the flow of the solder, or even some new solder to remove the legs completely before installing your new cap. You also want to clean the area to remove any leaky electrolytic fluid from the board as well. Be sure to take note of the orientation of the stripe on the side of the cap before install and make sure that you're installing the new part in the same direction. There are normally positive and negative symbols on the board to guide you for this as well, but note that the polarity of these parts matter and these can be installed backwards. Once you're sure of its orientation, the stripe being the negative side, slide your cap into place and bend each of the legs to prevent it from falling out. Flip the board over and solder down the legs. Trim up the ends and clean up the area to remove any excess flux. Now slide the board back into place by putting the rear in first. The AV connection is the hardest part to get in place just because it has an added amount of shielding around it. There are also some black studs on the case and some cutouts on the board itself to line up. The board has some play to slide the rear ports properly into position too. And you'll know that it's fully seated when most of the screw holes are aligned. Then start screwing down the board and reattaching all of the cables in reverse order that you remove them. For the 1.0 version's daughter board, make sure that it is fully seated in the front before adding in the other parts. Slide the disk drive assembly in first, followed by the hard drive housing, and before screwing them down, make sure to route all of the cables to the proper locations and channels for them to fit snugly. If these aren't perfectly put in place, the lid won't completely close, and you'll have to adjust it. But add in the three internal case screws once you know that everything is flat, then your lid, and your final six bottom case screws before testing it out. And congratulations, you now have an Xbox safe from leaky clock caps for a very long time. I hope this guide helped you, and if you're looking for additional tutorials on fixing other issues, be sure to check out my channel. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next fix.